I had an opportunity to come out to uh, Johns Hopkins. Do you want to? All good. Uh, we've had all sorts of beeps and whistles and clicks okay. and stuff. Right. We added that out. You're an internationally recognized expert in pulmonary medication adherence issues. Uh, what are some factors that make it particularly difficult for medication adherence here in Baltimore? There's uh, a lot of research that demonstrates that um, no matter what physicians recommend, the, there's a gap between recommending treatments and what patients actually do. I mean, we're individuals who make choices. There are a lot of things that influence whether we follow the recommendations of a, a doctor that we're seeing. Within uh, families, there are strong beliefs about how to take care of health. There are lay beliefs. There are cultural determinants of health. There are factors related to education and your ability to understand what you're being told. There are elements of trust, whether or not you trust what you're being told. In Baltimore in particular, there is unfortunately a, uh, a long history uh, of uh, residents of Baltimore not necessarily being able to trust Johns Hopkins as an institution. So all of those factors come together and can influence whether or not a patient feels that what's being recommended for them is in their best interest right. and beyond that their ability to actually implement that. Why is it uh, so important that we close these health gaps to improve quality of care for everybody? Well apart from just the the rightness of it we know that there are significant health disparities that there are dramatic differences in life expectancy, even within Baltimore City, you know, neighborhood to neighborhood. I live in Guilford, which is a, a lovely, pretty community with tulip gardens and a life expectancy of uh, greater than 80 years. Uh, not two, four blocks from where I live, we're talking about a neighborhood with a life expectancy, both by drugs, by violence, and by uh, um, chronic health conditions is 20 to 30 years lower than that. Um, so it's it's our responsibility in, in the healthcare field to address that, both from the delivery of care aspect in terms of what we do and how we care for patients, but also I think it's our responsibility if we genuinely care about the health of our patients to be socially active and to think about how do we become the voice for those who don't have a voice? How do we make clear that health is not just a matter of, of the drugs that we provide, it's about the communities and how those communities support people. Dr. Rand, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. That was a close work look.